Hello and welcome to this open educational resource which is brought to you by University of Malaysia Sabah. This lecture will focus on plant molecular biology with an emphasis on molecular breeding. Which will discuss our breeding, breeding via hybridization, breeding via mutagenesis and molecular breeding. To begin with, we have to understand the concept of breeding which involves the crossing over or hybridization of two varieties of plants to der derive a new or novel hybrid. Hybrids can be determinate and indeterminate. In the case of determinate hybrids, the two parental genotypes are known. In the case of indeterminate hybrids, one of the parents will be indeterminate or unknown. Breeders rely on quantitative traits, which refer to phenotypical traits, in order to develop novel hybrids. Some of the key concepts which we need to understand as breeders are linkage equilibrium and linkage disequilibrium, linkage drag, gene stacking, back crossing and recurrent parents, marker assisted selection, and the environmental effects and antistasis. To begin with, let us understand how plant breeders have developed thousands of new varieties by selection of parental genotypes with desirable phenotypes followed by control breeding. Today's breeders are assisted by molecular markers which can be linked to specific quantitative traits in order to develop novel plant varieties. In the early days of breeding, Breeders relied on open pollination in order to develop indeterminate hybrids. These indeterminate hybrids provided variation. However, modern agricultural practices require consistency. Consistency can be achieved by developing determinate hybrids which ripen at the same time. In the case where both parental genotypes, the donor and the recipient are known, the F1 progeny is de designated as determinate. When F1 hybrids are open pollinated in the field, the resultant F2 generation is designated as indeterminate. Indeterminate hybrids may exhibit a variation in phenotypical traits, which may not be desired by commercial breeders. This is why the commercial seed industry is based on the development of determinate hybrids. Phenotypical characteristics are designated as traits. Some traits such as flower color can be observed physically, whereas others such as grain yield, disease tolerance and herbicide resistance need to be evaluated by subjecting the plants to specific challenges. Traits can be classified as discrete and continuous. For instance, an example of a continuous trait is the variation in the color of a flower based on different hues or shades of pink or shades of red. In the case of discrete traits, the characteristic or phenotype is distinct. For instance, the flower color is either pink or white and there is no intermediate hue. When a DNA marker can be linked to a specific trait, it is referred to as a quantitative trait locus. Quantitative trait loci are valuable tools in the development of novel hybrids. Genomic loci are subjected to genetic rearrangement by the twin processes of recombination and transposition. In some cases, successive recombination events may result in two or more loci that appear to be linked to each other and are designated to be in linkage disequilibrium. The converse of the above phenomenon is linkage equilibrium. Another concept is linkage drag. When two varieties of a specific crop plant, the wild type and inbred line, are crossed to develop a novel F1 hybrid, the desirable traits from the wild type are acquired by the F1 generation. However, the process may also result in the acquisition of some undesired traits. This phenomenon is known as linkage drag. 
The solution to this problem lies in backcrossing or in genetic modification using horizontal gene transfer into inbred lines. Another key concept which breeders need to take into consideration is epistasis and the environmental effect. Not all F1 hybrids may exhibit the traits contained in the genetic material inherited from their parental genomes. This effect can be attributed to the phenomenon of epistasis, and as well as the influence of environmental factors on the expression of specific genes. For instance, the genetic trait encoded by a plant, which is the donor organism, may be overridden or watered down by the trait acquired from the recipient. This interaction is known as epistasis and may result in undesirable phenotypes. The process of DNA marker development relies on the following stages. We first develop a population. We then link specific traits as recorded in the phenotype to the genotype. We validate these traits by performing repeated test crosses, and we validate the markers by ensuring that there's a linkage between genotype and phenotype. This process is known as marker-assisted selection. According to the laws of Mendelian inheritance, traits designated in this figure as A and B in blue and X and Y in red segregate independently of each other. This results in a typical Mendelian inheritance pattern. In order to develop novel varieties, wild types known as recruits are hybrid, are hybridized to the F1 population. The F2 population is a result of the crossover between the recruit and individuals between the F1 population. This increases the number of varieties and leads to the development of new hybrids. Molecular markers are specific regions of the DNA which are located on flanking regions of the desired trait. In this figure, the blue rectangle indicates the gene encoding the specific phenotype or trait. RA and RB are designated as molecular markers which are located on either side of this gene. It is essential to have two or more molecular markers linked to a specific trait. This ensures that the trait is not lost over successive generations as a result of recombination. There are several advantages of marker-assisted selection or MAS. It is simpler than phenotypic screening, especially in the case of complex traits. Selection can be carried out at the seedling stage without waiting for the plant to develop into full maturity. This saves time. Single plants can be selected. Both homozygotes and heterozygotes can be identified. All of this results in a reduction in the space required for breeding as well as in the time required for awaiting for the plant to attain maturity. Mass has many applications. It can be applied to evaluate breeding material prior to planting. It can be applied to assist in back crossing, pyramiding, and can be used to select plants for downstream hybridization experiments, which is defined as early generation mass or the combined mass. Marker assisted evaluation can be applied to evaluate cultivars for purity of breeding material, to assess genetic diversity of germplasm and selection of parental genotypes, the study of heterosis or hybrid vigor, and to assess allelic diversity and select rare genotypes for inclusion into breeding programs. 
Marker assisted backcrossing can be used to perform integration experiments, which will lead to a lower degree of linkage drag. For instance, in this case, AB and XY represent the original parental genotypes. F1 represents the genotype obtained by crossover of the two parental genotypes. AX, AY, BX, and BY represent the four combinations of traits. In this scenario, XY is designated as the recurrent parent. In order to obtain a greater concentration of the traits attributed to XY, the recurrent parent is crossed over with F1 progeny. The resultant F2 progeny exhibits varying degrees of traits obtained from the recurrent parent. Over subsequent generations, such as F3 and F4, the recurrent parent will contribute to a greater inclusion of traits derived from the F2 parent. This is a schematic representation of marker-assisted backcrossing. So in this case, we have a crossover of two varieties in which is the F0 generation. Blue and red represent the parental genotypes. In the F1 generation, green and red dots represent the progeny obtained by breeding. This progeny with a ratio of 50-50 of the parental genomes is recrossed or back crossed with one of the parents, which is known as the recurrent parent. Subsequently, generation F2 contains a greater percentage of the genome which can be attributed to the recurrent parent, in this case designated as blue. The next round of hybridization results in a lower level of representation of the recurrent parental genome. So in this case, 87.5% of the genome is acquired from the recurrent parent and only 12.5% of the genome can be attributed to the wild type. This will essentially makes sure that a majority of the genes are from the pure type, blue type, and a minority of the genes acquired from the wild type. Marker-assisted pyramiding is another procedure which is adopted by breeders in order to obtain genetically distant pedigrees or purebred lines. Markers can be applied to select specific genotypes purely on the basis of their desirable traits. Marker-assisted pyramiding, as the name suggests, resembles an inverted pyramid. In this case, the parental genotypes are crossed over to obtain an ideotype, and which is then crossed with itself in obtain to, to obtain an inbred line. Early generation mass facilitates the elimination of F1 hybrids which do not carry the desired traits as reflected by their DNA profile. And mass involves phenotypic screening combined with molecular markers which are essential because not all traits can be identified using purely molecular genetic approaches. One of the problems associated with mass is incorrect linkage. During the process of meiosis, chromosomes will cross over. If the recombination site is located within the region between a quantitative trait locus designated as QTL in this figure and the gene of interest designated in red, the QTL will be lost and the marker will no longer be suitable for selection. Case 1 represents tightly linked markers, in which case the QTL is linked to the gene of interest. Case 2 represents insufficient linkage. One of the reasons why marker assisted selection is not widely adopted is the high cost. The genomes of plants have to be fully sequenced in order to identify specific traits. Subsequently, the genomes have to be validated by development of specific probes or molecular markers 
which then need to be applied over sub successive generations of breeding populations for validation. This statistical requirement contributes to the high cost of marker-assisted selection. Another technique which is adopted by breeders is gene pyramiding. In a gene pyramiding scheme, P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5, and P6 represent the founder parents. Each of these parents contributes a unique set of traits. The generation F1 is obtained by crossing over each of these parents. As you can see in this figure, there can be various combinations. For instance, P1 can be crossed with P3 or P2 can be combined with P6. However, the resultant F1 generation is used as the seed for subsequent populations. So once we have the F1 population, we combine this into the F2 population. So in this case, the traits acquired from the four original founder parents, P1, P2, P3, and P4, P4 are combined into the F2 population to obtain a node. After we obtain the node, the root genotype is a combination of the two nodes. The node is subsequently inbred or self-crossed in order to obtain the idiotype. What you see in yellow represents a pedigree line. A pedigree line is one in which all the founder parents can be identified and attributed to with specific characteristics. This represents a gene pyramiding scheme. Over the course of this lecture, we have introduced you to various concepts associated with breeding, such as marker-assisted selection and quantitative trait loci. Watching this open educational resource, which is brought to you by University Malaysia Sabah. For more information, please contact me at the email listed at the end of this YouTube video. Thank you.